Today, we have a comparison of some of the most popular paintball guns you can get on the market today and the nicest ones. These are not the nicest, but they're definitely on that list. It's all opinion, but let's get to the comparison. All right, first, we have the um, 2012 Bob Long G6R and the Bob Long Victory. Next, we got the MacDev Clone VX and the uh, Eagle 11. This one's a limited edition Vicious Eagle 11, but we're just going to say it's the Eagle 11. All right. The first category is packaging. This, the first, for Bob Long, we're going to include both of these guns in the Bob Long category. Uh, um, Bob Long packages the guns in really flimsy cardboard boxes. Um, I think for a company this popular and this nice, they could at least try to make a a, um, a case or, or like, a, like the Ego and the Clone have. But instead they wanted to put a little flimsy cardboard box with really, really crappy foam in there. You don't get any tools. You don't get any lube. You don't get a pressure tester. You have to go out and buy all that stuff yourself. Um, so I think that Bob Long... That's that's a turn off for some people when they're thinking about buying a gun. Um, packaging is actually pretty valuable for people. Not very valuable for me because it's about the gun, but a lot of people like to have good packaging, so I think Bob Long could step it up a bit and make a nice case. Alright, there we go. So on the clone, you have a nice zipper case that opens pretty nicely. You have a place to put your chef barrel kit your adding keys, a little net like you have on the die cases, gives you just your owner's manual for everything you need to know about the gun. And of course where you put your gun itself with a little place for some lube. It's a pretty high end case, stops your gun from getting bumped around a lot. So yeah. Here's the ego case. It's nice metal on the outside, it protects the gun really well. And on the inside, it's got room for a full barrel kit like I have. The other two barrels are on my gun. It's got room for your gun, your add-in keys, some extra stuff you might have, and your oil, and a lot of spare parts right here. Personally, I think this is the best case because it has room for a lot more stuff. but. I guess others may disagree. So for this category, the packaging is a tie between the Clone and the Eagle 11. The G6R and the Victory, completely out of this category. Their packaging is horrible. All right, next is the barrel. With Bob Long guns, I don't know about the Victory because I have a different barrel on there about this used, but for Bob Long guns, at least for the G6R, comes a nice one piece 6854 barrel. I'm not a fan of one piece. I like two pieces. Easier to package up, easier to um, take care of. Um, but one thing I really, really like about this is stock, they put a 6854 on here. Instead of with other companies such as MacDev, they put a 691, which is huge. The e -Tech and stuff like that, they put 693. That's ridiculous. Like, um, so I'm, I'm really. Um, surprised and actually kind of happy they did that. So that's a win for me that they put a nice bore in there so you don't have to go out and buy another one. So for the clone, we have the nice shift barrel. Kind of like the freak barrel, has some inserts, except you don't slide them in there, you screw them in with a wrench or something. Instead of having to buy a whole new barrel back, just get like these little inserts for them. It's a pretty high end barrel, like you'd find on a Lux or an Ego. It works pretty well on this. Here we've got the popular shaft bore barrel. These come in 14 and a half and 16 lengths. They come stock with a 689 on there. I'm not sure if you can see that. But I've also got an 85 and a 92, I believe. So I got a full barrel kit for it. It's the only thing you have to know about this is reverse threaded. So that might throw you off sometimes if you're trying to put on your barrel. But I like this barrel a lot. It's very accurate and very light. And yeah. 
So for this category, it is a tie between the G6R, the Clone, and the Ego 11. Just because it is all personal preference. You might like one-piece barrels better than all we do. We like two pieces. And that it comes with a 685 bore. So you don't have to spend any extra, mo any extra money going out and buying a new barrel. So for me, it's a tie for between um, these guns. Alright, next is the board. Um, the G6R, the Clone, and the Eagle 11 come with a nice OLED board, and the Victory comes with an LED. So, flashing lights. You can buy an upgrade board for this with an OLED, but the, the newer version of the Victories have an OLED board, but for this one, it is not, so. Here's the board on the uh, G6R. Put on the button. Turns on. It's got all the um, information you need, such as your mode, your battery life, how many balls per second you're firing, and if there's an eye. I mean, if there's a ball in the breach, the eye sends that. So, it's a standard board that you find on um, a high end gun. A nice OLED board. Too bad I couldn't put those on, but whatever. <laughs> So, on the Mac Dev, we have a nice gun, nice board, laser eyes when it turns on. You have kind of a small display on the left side of the grip, so more for right handed shooters. If you're shooting left handed, you're going to kind of have to move your hand see, which isn't that big of a deal, but it could get annoying. I'd prefer to have it on the back here. But you have your battery life, your peak rate of fire, and your firing mode. As you can see, you can tell when there's a ball in there. You might not be able to see that very well. And it tells you if your eyes are on or off with an X. I think the Ego 11 has a great board. It's really big. You could turn it on by either holding or double tapping this home button right here. This gives you a nice sound to let you know it's on. Not sure if you can see that. I have it on the color green, so it might be kind of hard to see with the computer since it's such a bright green. But on here, I've got a little shot counter. Just head for 200. It kind of goes down. It's like a little tube that goes down on once you fire 200, it completely runs out. On your left, you've got a shot count. On the top, you got a sensor that tells you if you have a paintball in the barrel or not. You got a sensor that tells you if your trigger is pulled all the way, halfway, or it's not pulled at all. You got your tournament lock on here, mine's unlocked. And it's got a battery sensor, it tells you how much battery you have. I think the personally the Ego has the best board, because very big, really easy to see. You could change the color on it, and it's really easy to change the modes and everything on there. Like he said, the board it has to go to the, to the uh, Planet Eclipse Eagle 11 only because of the size. It is huge. You have more to see on there. More stuff to take up room. But um, I'm not saying that these two boards are bad. This one is fantastic. It's a great board. That one's good. And that one's really good. But it could be your preference. But um, we all agreed that the Eagle has a better board out of um, these. And like I said, the Victory is a little flashing light. So the regulator. The Victory and the G6R decided to you know, go with the uh, no macro line. As you can see, there's nothing here on these two guns. Like you'd find on the clone and the Ego. So if you're playing fast, you know, it's easy to switch hands with. Instead of going like this and, you know, catching it on the macro line, as you can see, you can just grab like this. But if you had a macro line in there, you would not be able to do that. Um, there's nothing to leak here, nothing to get in the way, no macro line fitting sticking out, digging into your wrist. I think that's it. That's that's really good to do for paintball guns. Um, but it could be a preference, but I like that. So with the regulator on the clone, <laughs> has a macro line. A lot of people don't like that. I don't really think it gets in the way that much. You could just put your hand up here. Even if you do have it down here, you could just switch the sides. And you're not going to be having your hand like in between here. But, yeah. The Ego 11, the regulator is really nice. Although it does have a macro line, like I have a transparent one here, it has a 45 degree swivel, so it's not going to be sticking out and shifting. You kind of tighten this part on the bottom so it doesn't shift. As you can see, you have to push really hard to shift it. 
and even if it does get loose, you can just tighten this bottom part right here. So I think this is a great efficient regulator. Um, these regulators all work very well. Um, they're all pretty. They all get like you get pretty good efficiency with them. But in my opinion. I, I'm pretty sure they can agree too. If you could have no macro line on that gun, they would choose to have no macro line. Um, so for regulator, it's it's got to go to the uh, the Bob Long guns. All right, next is the trigger. Um, every gun here has a micro switch trigger, except for the uh, ego, because you can change it between micro switch and um, optical switch. But this one's pretty snappy. You can go really fast. I think Bob Long's got one of the best triggers. I can hit 20 BPS on semi on this. Um, same with the victory. They got really nice triggers. So they got nice adjustables. You can have um, a two point adjustable. I'm not sure. This one's three, but you can adjust them in any way you like. Travel and how, if there's like a, a tension or anything like that, the spring. The trigger on the clone's pretty nice. You go pretty fast with this. Shotgun 14.9. It's pretty nice and goes farther out, which I like. It's not too far in, so you're not going to have much resistance between here. So it's pretty good for MPPL when you're going semi automatic. And the Ego 11, this isn't the stock trigger, it's the same shape, but it's not metal. It's really nice, five point adjustable, two in the middle and three on the top. Like Zach said earlier, it's micro switch and it's optical. So if you don't like either of them, you just choose which one you want, I guess. I personally like optical, but I guess it's personal preference. Me and him are both fans of micro switch, so yeah, they're easier. But yeah. whatever, who cares? This ego it's, has to win on that one. I was going to say it's a tie because it's all personal preference. Yeah, but you could adjust more things on the ego and you could switch between optical and. Micro switch. I agree. All right. Yeah. I, that. Although the Bob Longwoods have a really smooth trigger. Yeah, that's true. Um. So I guess we gotta go with the uh, ego on that one. We got two bullets for that one. So, like, like he said, you can switch between the um, optical and micro switch. There's more adjustable points on there. I'm not saying that any of these triggers are bad. This one is fantastic. One of the best triggers I've felt. But I'm gonna say this one's smoother and easier and crisp. Like easier to move than the um, Ego, but you can always adjust that one to make it how you like, so um, the Ego wins on that one. The next one is the grips. Um, the grips on the Bob Long, I can't say for the Victory because it's got like those crappy little plastic ones, but those are aftermarket. I got it like that when I came in the mail, used. Um, they're nice grips, they're rubber, they um, have the holes there for your fingers that molds in your hand really nice. It's easy to grip, so it's not like, it's not like a hard rubber or like a plasticky. It's 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 not like soft, but it, you can feel it's like kind of um um bouncy, I guess. So you have like a nice grip there. So those are the grips on the G6R. So on the Cologne, the grips have like the screen as I showed you earlier, which I think is pretty cool. But these ones I got used, so they're really really worn down. So, even without me worn down, it's so you still get like a lot of grip with it. It's not gonna like fall out of your hand or anything. Maybe if you replace it like with a, um, a plexiglass one that had like a cool design, it'd be a little more slippery, like I did in my E Tech, but it still works pretty well. Ego 11 has a great grip. It's got a little logo right here, and it's all it's not wrap around but has this rubber spine that goes all the way up here so if you're diving to snake and maybe you lose a little bit of grip on the bottom here you still have really good tension on here to keep your gun from falling out of your hand so I'd say that it would go to the Ego 11 on grips what do you guys say? I think that the overall feel of the gun goes to the G6R but the I think it's a nice feature that the um Ego has the uh, the grips on the back here, so you have 360 degree um, grip on the gun. So I it's think personal preference. The clone feels a little bit boxy, but it's it's fine. 
it's they're they're all, it's scripts, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. You can always replace them, but if buying the gun stock, I have to go with the Eagle Eleven on that one. Alright, next is the ASA. On the um on the Bob Long guns, or on the, the newer ones, not the eleven G six R. But uh you have a nice cam lock ASA, it's just really simple to use, you just twist it like this to gas it up and degas it. It's the same thing on the uh, Victory. Twist it, twist it. Same, if they're same company, same ASA. So it's easy to do. You don't lose very much air. Like when you twist them like this one, it goes like takes for a while maybe. This one is quick and fast like that, like that. So I like it. It snaps into place. Um, so it's not going to come out unless you like, kind of like put like force into it. So it's not hard at all, but it's kind of like held with like a magnet or something. So and it locks into place like like a little click. So you know that it's there. I like it. So the clone, kind of like the, um, oops. <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. They can, they can, they can fall <laughs> yeah, off. You, you put lose it a lot too of air. much. But yeah, you lose a lot of air when you do this, but you just kind of tighten it in. Really, the ASA is a matter of how lazy you could be and which one's better. ASA, I think it could not get much better or more simple with the Ego 11. Because when this thing is gassed up, literally all you have to do is press this silver button and the air will press, press the ASA forward. So it will get the air out of the gun. And all you have to do to gas up your gun is just push it forward. So I don't think it's really possible to think of anything much simpler or more like better and more reliable. But because as you can see, this thing kind of locks in place. And it won't go forward no matter how hard you push, unless you push this button. Like he said, it's pretty much how lazy you want to be. It is a little bit about saving air, but it doesn't waste pretty much any with any ASA you have. But like I said earlier, when you twist that, it came off. That's, oh. that's why I don't like the twist ones. You twisted too much. Like you did. Um, <laughs> but it is a term of, it's, it's pretty much about how lazy you are. That one, because people are looking for it easier nowadays on paintball guns, but pressing a button is and pushing it back into place is easy. This is fairly easy, and that takes more time. So the win on that one it goes to the Eagle Eleven. So right, efficiency. All right, the G Six R is proven to be the most efficient gun on them, the market today. They have not come out with a gun that's more efficient. There's a video on YouTube of Bob Long getting 21 and a half pods with a 45 fill. You're, you're most likely not going to get that when you're playing because he had perfect board to paint match with the barrel, so it's perfect, and he had like all the settings tuned perfectly to make it to make his gun look better. But still, even if you had this gun without any of that, this would be really 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 efficient and that's that's a big um thing for some people because let's say you're playing a tournament and you're in there for a while and you don't want to walk all the way out and you're playing psp and you use a lot of you use a lot of air um it's a it's a big factor for some people when deciding for a gun so if you're looking for air efficiency i'd go with the uh, gsr the victory um it's like it's in the middle. It's just, it's standard, you know. It's you can put a spool engine in it, which would make it um less efficient but a lot smoother. Put this back in place. But um, it's it's efficient, but not even close to efficient that these that these XRs. So the clone, it's a spool, so not as effective as a poppet. Even though on the um, victory you could change it between poppet and spool, which is pretty handy. Choose which one you want. So I think this one actually comes in last because spools are not as efficient as poppets. I'm just gonna button right there. Um, this is not on this category is not on the bolt. So don't get mad if you're a spool guy. This is on efficiency, and everyone knows that spools like to suck down air. So don't get don't get um annoyed that we said that. Ego 11 has pretty good efficiency, not quite as good as the G6R, but could get a lot of paint out of just 145 fill. I've used this for a couple times now, and I've really had to fill up my air. So it's really fun if you just 
instead of just bring a lot of paint out to the field and you want to play for a long time without going back to refill your air or if you just want to bring air back to your house and you don't have a place to refill it you can fire a lot of a lot more paint with this or a G6R than you could with like that. Poppets tend to be more efficient so like like first place goes to the G6R it's like I said, it's one of the most efficient guns. It actually is the most efficient gun on the market. Second goes to the Eagle 11, third the Victory, and fourth the um, a clone. We're not hating on the clone, but it, it is a spool, so it sucks down air. Alright, next is the smoothness. Now, guys who like spools, here's your turn. Alright, <laughs> the spools tend to be a lot smoother than Poppets do because, you know, the bolt slamming back and forth here gives it a little bit of kick. You know, like that. And this one's a spring. This one is just sliding back and forth internally. Um, GXR is a really smooth gun. I shot it, you know, it's it's a really smooth gun. Um, but it's not as smooth as a spool, I'll tell you that much. It's smoother than the first generation Geo, but it's, it's a poppet, so there is by far smoother guns out there. It is smooth, but it's, you can, it, there's still a little kicking notice. Well, on the other hand, the Victory stock, it's got a bit of kick. Not too much, like, like you know, like a little bit of barrel rise. Not that much. But if you put a spool engine in this, you'll be shooting straight all day, I swear to God. Like, no kick at all. You can, be, you can be rocking that trigger and not getting any kick at all. But if it's stock, you don't have a spool engine, it's, um like, at an average gun. The Cologne, as you can see, it's a spool, so it shoots pretty smoothly, like we just talked about. That one, I'm not sure between which one of those two. This one and the Victory is smoother, because they could both be spools. But I haven't shot this one yet, so I don't know. This gun for an Ego, I thought it wouldn't be at that smooth, because... Don't get me wrong, there are a lot more smoother guns out here. But also, since I've got the Dart Kit installed, it's a lot quieter and just feels a lot smoother than I thought it would. So although it probably comes last between these four guns, I would say it's still a really smooth gun. Yeah. When you get a high end, I don't think there's not I don't think there's one high end out there that has a lot of kick. Um like he said, it is the one that has the most kick out of these four, but it's not a lot. Um so out of the poppets, I wanna say the G six R is the smoothest. But out of every gun here, it's got to go to the spool because it's a spool and they're known for um, smoothness. Yeah, and we might do some shooting videos with these guns so you can kind of compare it on your own time by watching them. Okay. Alright. The feed neck is not a big category. It's a feed neck. You can always pay for it. They're like 20 bucks or cheaper. Alright, so on the Victory, it's a regular locking feed neck with a, an, a little adjustable screw there for an Allen key. It's nice. It's, it glides really nicely. It's, it's a smooth. It might sound weird, but it's it's smooth. Um, like pushing it in, there's not like a little. It's not like a little click again. I have to force it. It just goes. It's it's really smooth. And the same on the um, G6R. It's got the same feed neck, same company. So I like those feed necks, but they're probably better out there. Yeah, on this gun, the feed neck just your simple twist feed neck. There's no screw on the other side like to tighten it, which I don't really like. But it does have this little notch to hold it in place from like squiggling everywhere when you're playing with it. So I like that, but I don't like not having a screw to use an Allen key to tighten it with. I think this is a great feed neck. It has this little knob right here where you could adjust it. So my rotor has a really big feed neck. So Usually, when I put it in the, when I take it off, it'll be really loose like this and be kind of dangling around. So I just put it like this and tighten it so it doesn't wiggle around all the time. But unlike my invert mini I had earlier, where you had to have like an Allen key to always with you to tighten it, this is a really good way to keep your feed neck tight. Also, it doesn't just like loosen up and it's really easy to do. It doesn't require any effort. So... Yeah. The the um 
the twist one, the twist feed neck, cannot get as tight as the um, Allen key feed necks can, but it still gets tight enough that your loader will not move around. Alright, next category is the bolt. Um, let's start with the G6R because in my hands right now. It's like a normal stack two pop it where you grab the pin, pull it up out of the rammer, and slide it out the back. Um, got three O rings, so it's it's a standard bolt you find on a high quality gun. Um, there's no need to upgrade it if it works fine. Don't fix something that's not broken. So I'd say it's. I don't see a purpose in upgrading it, but if you guys want to, Bob Long makes upgrades for this bolt, but. There's no purpose in doing it because this one works fine. So, like I showed you there, it's easy to put in. You just gotta align it with the hole in the rammer, and it goes in. Victory, on the other hand, these are both my guns, just letting you know. Victory, on the other hand, um, it's the same idea. You pull it up and pull it out. This bolt it sucks. Don't get it. Um, if you buy Victory, the first thing I I tell you to do, you can get them pretty cheap. You can get them for like 450. Um, this is the V1. Um, so. Uh, the first thing I'd recommend you go do is go out and buy uh, the spool engine because it is it's a much 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 better <laughs> bolt than this one. You will there's pretty much there's kick on this with a spool. Like I said earlier, no kick at all. So it's easy to put in. Like I showed you, I'll show you. Um, you've got to line this pin in that hole there. It's magnet this thing's magnetic so it takes a little bit of force to pull it up but not much. And you gotta line it with the hole and push it down. So that's it. So the clone has a pretty complicated spool board. The thing I don't like about spools is they're a lot of times complicated with lots and lots of O-rings. So this is the bolt. I don't wanna take it out now because as you can see by here it's really complicated. So if an O-ring pops, usually you might run out. But that's the thing, pass it down over there. Because I got a really big like O-ring rebuild kit. Got like 200 plus O-rings in there. Alright, here's the... Uh, yeah, I got this one. Okay. This is almost all O-rings, so I'm not going to have any problems with losing O-rings anytime soon. It's pretty complicated to put back together, but if you know what you're doing, it should be fine. Just more things that could go wrong, but it still shoots pretty smooth, so I guess it's worth it. And here's the Ego 11 bolt. Actually, this is the Cure 3 Plus. I have the dark bolt installed in mine. It's got a little ramp, so it's a little gentler on the paint above it. There's no soft tip, which I would like to see on a bolt, but I guess they know what they're doing. It's pretty nice, really efficient. Like I said, I have the dart kit installed in mine. For all of you who don't know, the dart kit replaces some internals also. It's not just the bolt. So, this gets it a lot quieter and more efficient. Because the air goes through the middle here. It's got two O-rings sealed off, unlike the stock bolt, where it has no O-rings there. It has this little brass insert also, which helps a lot. With efficiency. So, in terms of stock bolts, um, he showed you the Cure 3. That's the stock bolt, so we're not going to talk about the dart in this comparison. Um, but in terms of stock, it's a G6R. Only because it's got more O-rings, more efficient. Well, it's not, really, it's not even a big factor in efficiency of the bolt, but in a pop it. But, um, it's got more O-rings, gentler on paint. So... The stock bolt goes to the uh, G6R. Um, if you're a spool guy, then the clone will be fine for you. But the bolt goes to G the G6R for simplicity and ease of use and everything like that. So the next category is the uh, the available upgrades for each one of these guns. For the clone, there's a lot of upgrades. You can get triggered, new bolt, board. Um, regulator extender, feed neck barrel. Um, this this ex this reg right here is extremely small. Like you cannot fit your entire hand around it, as you can see there. So you gotta go up here and then, but um, they make an aftermarket part for that. So 
there's there's pretty much available there's there's some available upgrades out here but there's you can pretty much upgrade every part that you'd want to on this but I don't really see the point in doing it um the Jesus R you can upgrade the bolt the board you don't I don't even know why you want to upgrade the board this one's really good unless you have an 11 but um you can upgrade the trigger same thing, I don't know why you want to do that, this is great. Um, barrel. Um, um, the rammer. Um, um, upgrade the eyes as well. Feed neck. I'm not going to go through and list them all, but there's a lot of available upgrades for this. So There's no need to go out and upgrade this, really. And, and, so, sorry. And set for the, uh, set for the, um, the rammer here. Because sometimes on D6Rs, when you fire a ping... With a little pinging noise, so there's an upgrade called the Zero Ping Rammer, and that's pretty much the only upgrade that I would fully recommend if your gun is pinging. So there is a lot of upgrades for this, but there's no need buying them unless you need them. So upgrades that I would get on this gun: the feed neck. Like it's not a big deal, but then I would prefer one that keeps an Allen key to screw forward. And on the barrel, you could buy different inserts to make the bore size different instead of buying different backs, which I think is pretty helpful. And I would think about getting a new ASA, because if you're really lazy, like some people, you wouldn't like to twist it off all the time. So, yeah. Alright, I guess my aftermarket parts, the only one I would get is already on my gun, the dart kit. Just because the only thing people really complain about with the ego is the noise, and that solves this a lot. And no need to upgrade the ASA, because it's really stayed the arc really nice. Don't waste any air while taking it apart. Feed neck, I'm not sure why you would want an add-in key to unscrew, it's kind of stupid. So I guess you could just use this little lever here like I showed you earlier. It also looks really nice on the other side matches the color so in terms of upgrades like Zach said there's not a lot you really need except for the barrel kit which I got for this like I think I showed you guys earlier you get like you get like three backs and two fronts for it so yeah that's what I did with this alright so the winner for the available upgrades category goes to the G6R only because only because the Eagle 11 comes with any upgrade that you would want on a gun stock like Eagle 11 look at this you want a better ASA oh you already got one you want a 45 degree angle swivel you already got one you it's you want a big screen you want a new board you already got gone you want wrap around grips you already have one it's like if you want an upgrade on your gun, like you want a lot of upgrades, this one is the way to go only because it comes with anything that you would need. There's no purpose in upgrading anything on the Eagle 11. So, like, in t like the category is available upgrades, so that has to go to the G6R because there's more upgrades available only because there's no use in upgrading the Eagle 11. All right, the next category is the weight. The victory is it's light, pretty nice. It's not. It's a really light gun. Um. Yeah, I like it in the G6R. These are completely different feels. They feel really different in the hands because the weight is balanced in two different places. But this one feels a little back heavy. And this one just <laughs> or in this in the middle area. So I'd say the G6R is lighter than the victory, but not by much. So the clone, like most paintball guns, is aluminum, which is a pretty light metal. I can see why they'd use it if you're drawing it quickly at the very beginning of the game to shoot off the break. Or you just need to run fast, because like all your other stuff, your hopper, long hunt, like 150 rounds of paint, kind of weigh you down a bit. So it's pretty good to have weight, but this gun isn't quite as light as the G6R. So it's still pretty light, but. Egos are pretty light also, they're like 2 pounds, I think this one might be a little bit lighter because it got some metal shaved off here, 
but not much lighter. Mm -hmm. So, I think the weight would go to the G6R. Yeah, like I said earlier, this is probably one of the... Actually, I don't even know if I said this earlier, but... Tony Al, this gun is super light. So, in terms of weight, the um, the winner of this category has to go to the G6R. And this is the final category of this comparison, and it is the price. This is probably the most important um, feature when someone is buying a gun. Um, price pretty much determines the gun you're going to get, actually. Um, so, new, the Victory, I think it's 1400 or 1300, I'm not sure. But now it's like 500, 450, 500. But I'm talking in terms of when it came out brand new, so... New, this was a 14, 1300. Um, new, this gun's new. Um, pretty much... Uh, not, this this would cost nine ninety nine thousand bucks. Um, I didn't buy it new. The guy before we bought it brand new used it once and sent it to me. So, it's a, pretty much a new gun. I got it for a good price. Uh, so, like I said, the victory new is thirteen fourteen hundred. I'm not sure. This is a thousand, and they can say what theirs cost. So the Mac Dev, you can't really buy like new ones anymore. They all make them. This is, I think, the 2010 version. So I got this one used for 450, which is a pretty good deal. I've seen some go around 500, 550. Works pretty well. So yeah, these guns new they go for 995, so basically a thousand. When they were first released, they were 1350, but they're not that anymore. And for use on PB Nation, you can get them for 700 I got this gun, this limited edition Vicious Ego 11 with all the upgrades and everything for 700 So, that was a pretty good deal, I guess. I think he forgot to mention the price of his brand new. Um, I think it's 1400 maybe 15 14 13 It's any from 13 to 15 When it was first made. When it was first made. Um, this gun... Um, when it was first came out, it was nine ninety nine, and it still is nine ninety nine, because this is the newest edition. So, both of these guns have been a, a model after them, so their price has dropped. But this is the newest model of the G6R, so the price is still the same, a thousand bucks. Um. So that concludes the video on the comparison. Um. You guys can decide which one you like the best. I swear, from the uh. From the winning categories, I guess. Make sure to comment. Comment, like, and subscribe. Um, and we'll have more videos up soon. And tell us which one's your favorite, please. Thank you.